I have been waiting for this day since January. Today is my collaboration with the Posh Paper Lady and I am beyond excited. Let's go. Hello, I'm Noreen Burke. Welcome to my channel. If you are coming from Sherry's channel, I am so excited to have you here. Please say hello in the comments below. If you are returning, you have been just as excited about this as I have been. Back at the beginning of the year, I was surfing through and something on a channel caught my eye. And it was the black and white paper that I use from the Dollar Tree. And I started watching this tutorial of this woman with these beautiful blue nails and I was hooked. I fell in love with her. I sent a message thinking there's no way this lady is going to respond, but she did. And we've been chatting and we've been bouncing ideas back and forth and you guys, I am truly over the moon excited about what we're bringing you today. So. Let me show you what we've done. This is a storage container that has wheels and accessible storage on all four sides. So often I hear from you that you're in an apartment or you have plaster walls or you don't have a lot of space. I have been trying to come up with a storage solution that would work for a multitude of situations. So I've been playing around with this idea, but one of the things I struggled with was coming up with great storage solutions for a pegboard that would be budget friendly. And that's when I got excited about working with Sherry. Honestly, that woman can take any piece of discarded cardboard and turn it into a high end, functional piece that you would proudly display in your home. So if you haven't checked out her channel yet, definitely go into the description below and check it out. She is amazing. I love the things she does, but I'm also always excited because she does it under budget. She does great tutorials breaking down what to do so it's easy to follow. And again, I just think she's phenomenal. So definitely check her out. But let's get started with the functioning part. I built the entire cart and Sherry came up with the amazing storage solutions for the pegboard. So let's get started. So let's talk about the storage for a second. This is made out of one of those simple three-tiered bookshelves. You can get these at Walmart, Target. I actually see them at thrift stores all of the time. They're not always pretty, but these can be painted easily. So if you can pick one up for five to $10, grab it. Otherwise, a brand new one is anywhere between $20 and $35, depending upon where you get it. Now, these are made of fiberboard. The one that I have made is also out of fiberboard, so it will work. But if you're putting a lot of weight on it or you really plan on moving it frequently, I would hold out until you could find an actual wood piece. But again, these are so easy to find at thrift stores. So depending upon what you want to store in it, be open to things like small dressers or small side tables, something that will be sturdy, but give you open shelving storage or drawers inside so that you can add this other part to it. So some things you'll need to go along with this, regardless of what bottom piece you choose. You're going to need a drill, some wood glue. Wheels are optional, but if you use wheels, you will need a base. You'll need one eight foot furring strip and you will need a pegboard. Now let's talk about the wheels. I am showing you different wheels than what I used. I had salvaged some wheels off of one of those plastic Rubbermaid rolling carts and I used that on my unit and I regret it. Those are fine, but they don't roll as smoothly as the ones that I've listed here on Amazon. The wheels from Amazon are meant for a chair. They have a rubber casing around them and they're meant to hold up to 350 pounds, which means you can load up your unit. It's going to be able to hold the weight, but it will also roll more smoothly. If I could change anything about the cart that I made, it would have been the wheels and the placement, but I'll get into that at the end. The very first step so that I would save time was painting my pegboard. I just used Kills paint and I applied two coats and while this was drying, I set it aside and started working on the next step. 
Now, if you do want to cut your pegboard down, it is as simple as getting a straight edge ruler and going over it a few times carefully with a blade or an X-Acto knife, and then just bending it once you get that scored. Any rough edges that are left over, you can go ahead and use a sanding block to smooth that out and it'll be perfect for your project. Now it was time for me to prepare for getting the wheels on. I measured the width of my unit and I had a scrap piece of wood already. So I went ahead and matched that measurement to the unit so that I could cut it down. Once my wood is cut down, this is going to become the base. It's a nice thick piece. Now, I always recommend that you pre-drill before putting screws in. I'm using two and a half inch screws because I do not want this moving around. So once you have your four drilled spots first, it's time to go ahead and attach the screws. Do make sure, since this is a particle board, if that's what you're using, that you are aiming for the center of the particle board or you will split that, which is why using a wood piece of furniture would be helpful. Now here's a preview of what I'm going to be doing. The pegboard is going to be going on top and those furring strips are going to be cut in half so each one is about four feet long and it's going to be attached to the back of your unit. So this is a peek of what we're going to be doing. But now that we have the base on, I want you to be doing something differently than I did. I had the screws on the corners and I put the wheels in set from the unit. And if I could do it over again, I would put those absolutely at the four corners just for more stability. Now using a power tool isn't as intimidating as you think, but if you do not have a set of drills, you will need a couple of different sizes. So just be aware of that. You'll want to have a drill that's the same size as the screw. And then you'll also want to have a drill bit that's the same diameter as the wheel that's going in. This will make for a much easier job. So if you don't have those things, there might be a little bit more of a cost involved than the estimate that I gave. But once you have the correct drill bit that matches the same diameter as the peg of your wheel, we want to make sure that we're only going as deep as the post. A way to ensure that you're not over drilling is line up your wheel and mark off the end of the post with some blue tape. Here's an example and here's that little wheel sliding right in. Do this with all four corners and again I wish I'd gone the farthest spot but lesson learned. I did apply glue to all four of my wheels before sticking them in the post so they are not going anywhere. But the base is now completed. If there is any type of distance between your unit and that base and you don't like the look of it, you can get some simple molding at the hardware store for a very inexpensive price and just cover that up. I think it's a great hidden space for any type of mats or cutting boards for your unit. The next step was applying one portion of my pegboard to my base. Now I cut mine into half because my strip being only two feet was slightly more narrow than my bookcase. So I cut it so that I could have the full width of the bookcase on the top. And that smaller piece was okay to go in the bottom because it wasn't going to be hanging over the sides. So make sure you're considering that so that the pegboard matches whatever unit you're attaching this to. Now we're going to attach wood glue to the two sides of your pegboard so that we can put the furring strips on top. This will give a nice secure hold and you're gonna do this on both sides. Once it's dry, I did add some finishing nails on the other side just to make sure that my pegboard was absolutely secured. The next step was to drill into the bottom portion of my furring strips and these holes are going to be what allow me to attach the pegboard that I just created to the base of my storage unit. So I'm going to be attaching it to the back side. Now I hadn't painted this yet. Obviously I did at the end, but this way I think it's actually easier for you to see. So I line it up and I just put in the screws and I ended up putting six screws in. I put one at the top of each side, one at the bottom of each side, and then one in the middle. So this is now a 
sturdy, solid little unit that you can move around and dance with. Now that it's assembled comes the fun part. Look at what Sherry made. I was over the moon excited when I saw this. And by the way, if you know me, you know that I can't keep a secret to save my life. I've kept quiet about this since January, you guys. You have no idea. Like if I buy a gift for someone for their birthday and it's early, they get it before their birthday. There's no way I can keep it. So it was so impressive that I kept this secret about the posh paper lady. So often you guys would leave comments like, oh, I love her. And I was thinking, who? I do too, just wait. <laughs> So when she sent me this box, I was over the moon excited to see what she had done. So please go check out her channel, see how she made all of these items. But this was the fun part for me is to get to incorporate her amazing design elements and storage pieces into the unit that I had made. But I just think that this piece is honestly incredible. Here it is with Sherry's pieces and some of my craft supplies. I think this is beautiful, but I also think it's super functional because you can bring it with you wherever you need. If you have a small space, this can be in the corner and still look lovely, but when you need it, you can just pull it out, have access to your supplies, this can be customized in so many different ways. You can put in your own spins based on the supplies that you have. Maybe you're a painter, a crocheter, maybe you do woodworking. You could absolutely customize these pieces and units to fit what your specific interests are. But the fact that it rolls means you can put it in a corner and when you need it, you can pull it out. And don't forget, there's all of this prime real estate on the back. You should be able to organize all of your supplies in this cart. And because you can choose the base piece, it could be as small or large as you would like. I used mine just as a quick display to show ribbon and the pen organizer that I made fits on this shelf perfectly. I also got some of the soft-sided cube organizers from the Dollar Tree. I love organizing things in bags to keep those categories broken down, and those larger items can be tucked away and no one will see it. Overall, I think this is probably one of the best design ideas that I've had, and the total cost with everything between Sherry and myself was under $50. I don't know if I could touch one of those dream boxes for this price. And while yes, this isn't as big, it definitely fits the bill for having multiple storage items, complete accessibility, and you can customize it to your own needs. I truly can't wait to hear what you think about this. Please let me know if you like this. Let Sherry know on her channel what you think of this. If you're already subscribed to her, let her know that she did a phenomenal job. And if you haven't checked out her channel before, be sure to go over and check out some of the amazing storage solutions she has. This box that she made is so genius because you can take it off, use it where you need it, and put it back. These cups were a design item I had never seen before, and when she told me about it, I was just blown away. Another idea she came up with was this little chalkboard, which I think is just adorable. And the shelves mean you can either decorate or put more supplies. I used one of the small Dollar Tree dowels and put just a round piece of foam core at the bottom. I screwed in one of those little eye hooks and now I can hang my small ribbons and washi tapes from the pegboard. It just gives another great idea for having accessibility to your crafts. But can you tell I'm excited about this? I just love the way it looks. I definitely don't think that this looks like a $50 cart and the amount of storage that we were able to fit in here, in my opinion, is pretty spectacular. I truly cannot wait to hear what you think of this. This is probably my proudest design idea that I came up with. And with Sherry's design elements, 
It just pushed it through the roof. I am so excited for this. If you haven't checked out her channel before, please go give her some love. Show her how excited you are about this and definitely check out some of the other amazing designs she's come up with. Honestly, everything that woman does is high end, beautiful quality that just can't be beat by anybody else. But this design idea is super exciting for me because I know how many of you are always saying, we don't have space, we don't have a craft room, we don't have a lot of money, or you can't put anything on the walls. Maybe it's plaster, maybe it's brick. For whatever reason, this will allow you to create custom storage. You can make this as wide as you want. As long as it's on wheels, it'll be easy to maneuver. Again, get those Amazon wheels that can hold up to 350 pounds with that rubber gripping and putting them on the outside of the corners, not the inners like I did. It will be incredibly sturdy and you can just move it out when you need it, push it back against the wall when you don't need it and have those beautiful items displayed. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you watching this. I hope you had been as excited about this collaboration as I had been. I was counting down the minutes and days and I kept wanting to share little peeks with you, but I'm so glad that I didn't because you got to be just as excited as I was when it's all done. Another thing I wanna mention is if you are looking for pegboard pieces, I had worked with Mad Tools before and I honestly think they have one of the best quality pieces out there. So if you're interested in getting these, I'll have a link to Mad Tools in the description below, but I think they're a great quality product. Thank you so much to Sherry for collabing with me. It was such a great experience. I'm really glad I got to chat with her, work with her, and hopefully we'll get to do something again in the future. A thank you to my patrons who allow me to make these videos and a huge thank you to you for stopping by and visiting. I hope to see you again. Bye.